Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am an overcomer, writer, speaker, and God enthusiast. I am fueled by helping women achieve their emotional healing so that they can live the abundant life God has for them. In this podcast series, we provide faith-based inspiration to men from emotional hurt, along with tools and tips for emotional wellness. In your journey, as you apply these tools and tips, you will begin to live the transformed life that you always desired. In fact, you will possess a new you. Welcome back, my fellow treasurers. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode where we just talked about uh, being treasures in the jars of clay. And just how sometimes, you know, there's things that we have to work through uh, just in terms of our development and growth. Sometimes it ain't pretty. But amen to God for having faith in us and, and allowing us just to keep going even though we don't feel like it. So today, as I promised, we're going to talk about some stuff. Like, how do we just keep moving forward when life keeps trying to pull us back? And not only that, how do we keep having victories? Because you know, all the things that I've been talking about on the podcast is about us having victories and being able to be transformed in a great way. So, of course, I don't like to disappoint. I have a friend with me today, and her name is Sharice. Sharice, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, before we get down to the nitty gritty, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much again for allowing me this opportunity. My name is Sharice de Guzman, and I am married. I have been married for 23 years. The 27th of June was my anniversary to my wonderful husband, Torino, and we have two children, Adrian, who is 20, and Anissa, who's 16. It's funny because right now I'm in the process of looking for a new job. I was previously working for a nonprofit organization, and we, we did youth mentoring. I was the executive director, but unfortunately, the foundation had to close down. So now I'm currently, I find myself at a later age state or a stage in my life looking for um, a position and hopefully, you know, hoping God that will lead me to a position where I can, that it's not just a job. I don't want a job. I want something that I can be useful in and I can, you know, use my faith and my love of people to help others. And, and so I am a disciple of Jesus. I've been a disciple for 22 years. I was baptized in March of 98, or yeah, 98, um, in the Nashville Church of Christ. And since then, I've been a member of a lot of the sister churches, anywhere from Tennessee to Seoul, Korea, and now currently in Pullman, Washington, which is in Eastern Washington. Well, that a lot of information because what you were saying one thing that stood out in my mind was i know you made a statement but i'm a little bit older mm-hmm. and i just want to say girl you look good for your age <laughs> oh, well, thank you <laughs> i always appreciate those moments you were like and i say that too sometimes but then i look at other people and i'm like well you know what i ain't happy <laughs> And for those who are listening, I want you to know as well that this is a talented woman. So if you hear things rumbling, she is ready to get her hands and roll up her sleeves and get dirty to continue to inspire and encourage people in their growth. So I I know this is, uh, in general, this season is a challenging season. So I appreciate with you, you being honest with us because we all adjust in it. We all we just <laughs> and in that I always well actually I don't always but I would like to this time give the, our audience an opportunity to know something fun about you besides that you look good. How about you? <laughs> well, I was actually thinking a lot about what could I share. I've been fortunate to have a lot of great experiences, but one of the 
um, biggest and most memorable experience was in 2008, my husband was stationed in Egypt and mm -hmm. I got to go visit him. And in doing so, we had the opportunity to go to a, a resort and I got to parasail while I was there, which is so scary. I'm afraid of heights. So that's a huge yeah. God thing <laughs> that my husband could get me up there. But that was really awesome that I got the opportunity to do that and just experience that. That's pretty cool because a while ago I had shared with our audience about me doing zip lining. Mm -hmm. Now, it's much more smaller scale in parasailing. <laughs> and in my zip lining, all I kept saying was, Lord, don't have me done, don't have me done, don't have me done. Yes. So the mere fact that you did it and you enjoyed it, I am impressed. <laughs> And yes, so that I, I wasn't enjoying it all the time, but um, <laughs> after a while, it was a little peaceful. Right. See, at least you got to that point. <laughs> I was screaming to carry on the whole time. Oh, please don't have me done. Please don't have me done. And uh, my friend who was with me, you know, she will laugh to you because she was like, but you did this the last time. <laughs> You're still carrying on. I was like, I know, I know, I know. So, but, but that's good, though, because I think for me, it reveals that you are a person who is willing to conquer challenges and to do something spontaneous and in the midst of that, open to new experiences. So it, it speaks volumes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, <laughs> I would have been screaming and acting the pool. <laughs> but you survived. You survived. I did survive. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, you guys, I'm a Kind of get us back on uh, track in terms of why Sharice is here and why she's been so uh, open to spending time with us today. And as I stated before, we were talking about being uh, treasures in the jars of clay and working through experiences that we've had that may not have not gone our way. Mm -hmm. And so I asked Sharice here today mm -hmm. to tell us about some moments in her journey, in her life, where things did not go her way. And how does she respond to it? Oh. So she, please tell us about well, something. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, as you get older in life, there you have plenty of opportunities for things not to go quite your way. And but I I, I will say that every opportunity has been faith building for me. And you know, one such moment that I was fresh, more fresh in my memory is that five years ago. I live in a small town, Pullman, Washington. It's a college town. I actually went to school here at WSU, Washington State University. And when the church, oh, I was a, a member of the church over in Seattle area. And when they asked about moving over to help plant the church, I was like, absolutely not. I don't want to go. I have no desire to go back to Pullman, Washington. But obviously God had his way. And and in doing so, one of the caveats for me moving here is that he would open the door for me to continue my master's degree in school counseling. And he literally opened the door. The program had closed. It wasn't taken in any new students, but he op but they opened it for 24 hours and allowed me to apply, which was pretty awesome. And so when I got accepted, I was like, well, God, you literally opened the door. I can't deny that. But unfortunately, as things go, it wasn't smooth sailing. We, me and the kids moved here by ourselves. Our, my husband, not our, was still working over in Seattle area. So he stayed over there for about seven or eight months. And I was commuting to Spokane, Washington, which is about an hour and a half away, four days a week for school, which, you know, was really rough. And in doing so, my, my oldest son, or my oldest child, was in high school, and he started struggling just, you know, just new friendship, new school, being accepted. And because he's my child, and I started to struggle as well. Like, I started to, you know, ask God why he moved us here. I started to ask God, you know, why my son, you know, you opened this door, you made this obvious, why am I struggling like this? I began having panic attacks, sleepless nights. I started to isolate myself where I didn't really want to talk to people. 
And I even thought about quitting school because I just was like, God, you know, why am I working on getting this degree when I have, when my child is struggling so much? But I didn't give up, although it was a very dark time for me emotionally and spiritually. I had a lot of friends and family and my husband who were in my corner. But what it did do is it drove me to counseling because I realized that I couldn't navigate all this on my own. And I, I knew that I needed to do something different or else I just, I, I really felt like I was just going to lose my mind, to be honest. It was that dark of a time. But, it, you know, like I said, the counseling was very helpful and it, it really allowed me to continue to navigate schooling and being a mom and, and understanding that things don't go smoothly. Um, even if God makes it clear that that's what you're supposed to do, there's no guarantees. And so it was a, definitely a, a big growth period in my life, but it also made me realize that I had to take care of myself. And, and I did so, like I said, with counseling and for a little while I went on medication just to manage my anxiety and depression because I just, I felt like I just couldn't seem to manage it all by myself and praying and I was praying and I was reading my Bible and I was being open, but I felt like there was more that I needed in that moment. Sure. And I kind of want to take a step back a little bit because you shared a lot. And I know that you made the statement of being in a dark place, mm -hmm. but I, I know for most of us, we've, we've had experiences where things just got dark. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm curious for you, though, because you did have such a great support system mm -hmm. and you were in school. So what was it at what point was it like, OK, I know I have all these good things going on. I'm still praying. I'm still reading, but mm, I'm still not getting to that next level. Mm -hmm. And so what was that journey like of going back and forth, trying to decide do I go get help? Do I not go get help? Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through that a little bit more? Well, I will preface this by saying I have on and off had counseling throughout the years. I think the first time that I sought out counseling was about 13 years ago. But this particular time, I think the, the thing that sort of made me realize that I couldn't do it on my own was um, one particular day, I was, I was driving to school, and it was the winter month, so, you know, the roads could be dicey at best with snow, and, but for whatever reason, I had seen these, there was a, an accident, I hadn't quite got to the point where the accident was, but I kept seeing these cop cars passing me by with their siren, and I don't know what it was about the cop cars, but I just... I just lost it. Like I was driving, I started crying uncontrollably. I was shaking. And I, you know, I, I was able to safely get to school. I was like, God, I need you to, to rein this in for me because this is a long drive and I, I've got to get to school. But that day was just rough for me. I couldn't pull it together. I, you know, I had to walk out of class a couple of times. I just was crying. And like I said, I wasn't quite sure what what drove me to that level of just emotion. Right. But I just was like, okay, God, I, I need help. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't, like, because, you know, like I said, I think well, as disciples, we can, you know, get down on ourselves because we can feel like we're not doing enough, like we're not praying mm -hmm. enough, or we're not reading enough, or mm -hmm. we're not whatever, you know, you fill in the blank. But I knew I was doing those things and I still, felt out of control emotionally and and so I just was like counseling you know like I said I've, I've gone to counseling before and I had great success with that and I, I just knew and to be honest I had been fighting it I didn't want to rely on counseling because I struggled with that to be honest yeah but I felt like God was telling me you know don't allow your pride to get in the way and so I, you know, I, I talked to some of my professors because I was in a counseling program <laughs> and asked them for, you know, some recommendations. And one of my professors recommended the woman that I ended up going to. 
and it was perfect because she was in Spokane. And since I had to go to Spokane, you know, four days a week, I could meet with her while I was there. So, I mean, she really, it was really helpful. It really helped me to navigate my emotions and just talk about them. Because I think sometimes, unfortunately, we, we try to spiritualize, the, you know, our emotions. And what I mean by that is we don't really get to the bottom of what's going on with our hearts or, you know, past experiences. And we just tell people to pray, which mm-hmm. is all good things. I'm not saying that that's not, but there are times where people need more professional help and just praying is not going to make it go away. And so I just appreciate the fact that I already had experienced counseling before. Mm-hmm. And although I didn't want to go to counseling because of my pride, I knew that it was helpful. Right. And there there was several key things that you shared that it, even I became curious with. One was, and I guess it's speaking to my character, mm-hmm. is, man, how humbling that must have been to say, okay, I'm in this program where I'm here to help other people work through their difficulties, their obstacles, but yet I'm in this place where I need the same type of help. Mm -hmm. Did did you go back and forth for a while working through that uh, paradigm? I don't think, I don't think that was one of my struggles. And I say that because from the very beginning, our program talked about we actually, our first semester, we had to go to counseling for a little while. And the reason that they had us do that is because when you're sitting down with someone and you're asking them to divulge their deepest, darkest secrets and hurts mm-hmm. and pains, it really helps to for them to know you've been in that position before. Mm-hmm. And so I really appreciated the program saying, like, you guys need to experience that because you need to understand how hard it is to sit down with a stranger and tell them the the deepest things in your heart. And, and so I don't think that was one of the things, you know, I really do think the biggest obstacle is my, is my own pride. And, And for most of my life, I've been, I've been alone. I was the only child till I was 17. And so like, I really learned to be my own counsel and, like go inward when things were going, not going well in in my life. And so I think it's a very hard habit to break, to feel like I can do it by myself. Like I can be my own God and Mm. I can handle this. And, Mm. um, and so really whenever I've been in counseling, the biggest obstacle has been my own pride or thinking, Hey, I'm in a different place in my life. I'm more mature. I've, I've had these experiences. Why do I need this counselor to help me? And I will say that God has allowed me to stew in my own juices many times to see, you know what, it's it's not an indictment on me who I am as a person or a disciple to ask for help. Yeah, I would say pride was probably the biggest obstacle, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm actually really grateful that you shared that because I know too, even for women it's much more difficult to take that moment and say, okay, what do I need? Because we're so, and we're always in that role of helping others, especially I I think is even more, it speaks volumes even more to your own character. And I say that because your son was already going through various different things. Mm -hmm. And so it could have been, okay, well, my primary focus right now is to do school, take care of my son, and that's it, and then deal with me later. Right. Yeah. And we fall into that trap all the time where we're like the last person or the last one to say, okay, this is something that I need to do for me, and it is good. It is healthy for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And then there's two other things that you shared. Well, I said two already. But so the other one that you shared, which I would like us to talk about a little bit more as well, is, which I appreciate your honesty, and that (laughs) is sometimes praying ain't enough. (laughs) And yeah, yeah, and and so one of the things, because I remember interviewing someone before, and 
I, well, I was talking about that shame and guilt that kind of looms over like the Christian mind, mm-hmm. uh, especially in the sense where it's like, okay, well, God's supposed to be enough. I read today. I prayed today. That's it. Right. Yeah. And so for you in your journey, what have you learned that complements, you know, going to seek a counselor that actually complements your walk with God? Because I think sometimes we need to hear that. Yeah. You know, the biggest, the biggest shock to me was when I was going through my program and I would be sitting in class and we'd be talking about these different philosophies and and these different ways of counseling. And I would say a large portion of the time I would like, man, that's biblical. Mm. I think, I think what I've learned the most um, that helps me is that A lot of things that you learn in grad school when it comes to counseling, you know, they would never, of course, give God or the Bible credit for it, Um, but it aligns a lot with, with what we learn as disciples, like, you know, taking your thoughts captive, you know, Mm -hmm. when you are going through things, like you have to think about what's true. I mean, you know, there's a scripture about whatever's lovely, whatever's true, whatever is praiseworthy, think about such things. And and those are things that you learn in and in, in while you're talking to people, it's like, okay, your your mind is racing a hundred miles a minute, but think about what is true in this circumstance. Like, are you a terrible mother? No. There's some terrible things going on, but that doesn't make you a terrible mother. So what's mm-hmm. true is that there's terrible things going on. And so I just think, you know, if people give it a chance, they will see that, you know, psychology does align so much with biblical principles. And I think what happens, though, is that people take the God out of of spiritual things. Mm. Um, But what I've tried to do is I've tried to find God in every single situation that I've been in and learning because he is in that. God has created people who can sit down with you and and talk about what's going on with your brain and and how your thoughts are just spinning and spinning and and making you really believe in things that aren't true about yourself, about situations, about other people. And so it was actually pretty eye-opening for me to go, wow, like this, this is crazy how much what I'm learning in school aligns with, with what I've read in the Bible. Sure. And I would assume that that's not only what you learned in school, but something that you've learned in your own counseling sessions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That d- during that time, just learning about what is true. And one other thing that you shared earlier was about those emotions. Because mm-hmm. you talked about thoughts, but them emotions, they get you too. <laughs> and, and in your counseling session and or when you are working with other individuals, what are some things that have been helpful to be able to manage that emotional piece in conjunction with the thought process? Or is it the same thing? Well, I think the thing that I've learned is that we can't, if I feel something about a situation, I am viewing that through my lens of my experiences. And so how I feel about it are my emotions in there true? I think sometimes we try to disciple, for lack of a better word, people's emotion, but you can't tell me how to feel. Yeah. Now, you can, I can learn that I, I shouldn't necessarily act first out of those emotions, mm-hmm. but it's okay to feel them because I think, you know, it's just like, you know, talking to someone about anger. It's not the anger that's the sin. It's the, what you do in that anger that determines whether you're in sin or not. And I, I think we sometimes get it wrong when we tell people they don't have a right to be angry or sad or whatever. Hmm. But we all have those rich emotions and God gave them to us. And hmm. so like, if I'm sad about something, I'm sad for a reason. It's just not because I'm randomly trying to be sad. If I'm angry, I'm angry for a reason. Okay. But I can still like be angry and not sin in that anger. And so I, I love emotions because, you know, it's what separates us from being robots. I mean, yes. if we can't be honest about what we feel in our emotions, 
then we, I don't think we can really grow as people, mm-hmm. as disciples in any way, you know, because we're not really dealing with what's happening to cause those emotions. Oh, you just said a lot. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Oh, I got about 10 questions from that last little bit. <laughs> oh, but as, as you as you say this and as I'm getting excited, sorry to do that to you listeners. I'm really looking at the time and I see, oh man, that time went by fast. <laughs> yes, it did. And so um, I'm like, oh man, I got some questions. Okay, so let me not belligerent the, the point. So Sharice, because mm-hmm. I have Moda AQ, because we're going to talk about this really grow and, and develop what happens. We're going to talk about it. Can you please come back so I can ask you some more questions and we can uh, talk through this as well? I would love to. Okay, great, because I feel like we just scratched the surface. And mm-hmm. for those who are listening, if you've been with me for a while, you've heard other interviews. And one of the things that we talk about the most, or quite frequently, is dealing with those emotions and being okay about it. But then what do we do with them in a healthy way? So that is not new information. You really know, it's not new information. But what I really want us to talk about is, okay, well, how do we get to that growth place despite these emotions? I don't think we've done that yet. So we're going to talk about it. So come back next week. We're going to talk about it. I got some more questions, and we're going to have us a good old time. Thank you. <laughs>